Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. In my last video you may have seen my huge grocery haul that I made to be able to make eight full-size meals that are definitely going to probably feed Doug and I for double that because it's just the two of us. But in today's video I'll be taking you along with me as I meal prep all of those eight meals and I'll show you what goes into each one. I've never tried these meals before so I don't know how they're going to turn out but what I like about it from what I know is that rather than cooking the meals and then freezing them to meal prep, you actually freeze the fresh ingredients and then you just drop the one bag full of all of your ingredients into the crock pot the morning before you head to work or whatever your schedule is like. And then you're not reheating something that's already cooked, but it's fresh at the end of the day. So I do really like that idea. We'll see how they turn out though. I'll have to let you guys know. If you're interested in knowing where I got the recipes from, I will link the website below if you want to check it out for yourself. If you like these kind of videos, please let me know by giving it a thumbs up. That helps me out so much so I know what to create for you on this channel. And also please don't forget to subscribe if you're new. I'd love to have you part of the channel here. I do a lot of different homemaking videos, but most mostly, you know, cleaning motivation and ones like today's video. So if that's something that you are interested in, definitely stick around and check out the videos I've already got. I think you'll enjoy them. But without talking further, let's go ahead and get started and jump into some meal prep. This is only supposed to take me like an hour to do all eight meals. So if it turns out good, you can't beat an hour for eight meals. I mean, that's incredible. I'm hoping to save so much time in the evenings by having dinner already ready. So let's go. So the first recipe that we'll be making is for crock pot pepperoncini shredded beef. Everything that you'll need will be a two pound boneless beef chuck roast, a 12 ounce jar of pepperoncinis, six cloves of garlic, and half a teaspoon of pepper. And then one gallon sized plastic freezer bag, you I could cry or shout you will listen either way and I told you about the full breakdowns that are only my to talk about I even told you about the sacred grounds where I go when I need to shout there is more to you than words can say you're the roof when I'm wet from rain you know the core in every bit of pain so I wanted to say that you'll see me I definitely recommend going ahead and getting the diced pepperoncinis because I wasn't exactly sure what I was going to be doing with them in the recipe so I ended up picking up the jar of the whole peppers so I kind of made it harder on myself because I had to go and dice them but it still worked out in the end just <laughs> go a little easier on yourself and go ahead and get the diced jar of pepperoncinis. So after I diced them, you go ahead and pour all of the contents of the jar, all the juice, into the bag. And then you just trim off the fat on the meat. You'll want to take this out the night before cooking and honestly probably an entire day before cooking because it takes a while to thaw in the fridge. And then yeah, just set that in the fridge to thaw and then cook on low for 8 hours or until the meat shreds easily. And this can be served on rolls with a side salad or you can shred it and serve the meat right on top of the salad instead. Lastly, just add some black pepper, zip up the bag and drop it in the freezer. The next recipe is for crock pot beef fajitas and this takes two pounds of boneless beef chuck, shoulder roast, two red bell peppers sliced, one small yellow onion peeled and sliced, two cloves of garlic minced, one tablespoon honey, one tablespoon apple cider vinegar, one tablespoon chili powder, two teaspoons cumin, one teaspoon paprika, 
and a quarter teaspoon of crushed red pepper flakes. I definitely recommend actually doubling or maybe even tripling the vegetables. Here I used how many were called for, but I tend to like a lot more vegetables in my fajitas, so I would definitely do at least twice this amount if you like vegetables like me. But other than that, you pretty much just chop everything up and throw it in the bag and you're good to go. And then again, you want to take this out at least the night before. I would do the day before to give it plenty of time to thaw in the refrigerator. And then the morning of, you just pour all the contents into your crock pot and cook it on low for eight hours. And then you can just shred the beef and mix it all up. And then you can either serve it on tortillas or rice and then just top it with all the normal stuff that you would for fajitas like lettuce, tomatoes, shredded cheese or guacamole and salsa. Yes, as you're cutting up the onions, oh, it really made me cry bad. Now I'm just adding all the spices, honey and apple cider vinegar. Just as before, you're going to want to trim off the fat from the roast before putting it into the bag. Honestly, for any of these recipes, it's going to taste even better if you take the time to saute the meat before and even the veggies. If you take the time to saute them before freezing it, it's going to give it a whole lot more flavor. But I wanted to follow the recipes exactly and this was only supposed to take about an hour so I wanted to see how it would taste. Basically doing the minimum just to see. And it wasn't bad at all, I'm just saying you can add some extra flavor doing the saute. So I try to mix it up in there a little bit so the spices aren't just sitting in one spot. Next recipe is for crock pot chicken chili and this is actually going to be a double recipe so it's going to make two meals. What it takes is one pound of boneless skinless chicken breast, 15 ounce can of tomato sauce, 15 ounce can of diced tomatoes, 15 ounce can of black beans, 15 ounce can of kidney beans, one and two thirds cup of frozen fire roasted corn, two cloves of garlic minced, one tablespoon paprika, one tablespoon chili powder, one tablespoon ground cumin, one and a half teaspoons ground oregano, and a quarter teaspoon crushed red pepper flakes. And again, you're gonna wanna double all of these things so you can split it between the two bags.
and try not to dump the corn everywhere like I did there. So again, the day before you're going to be cooking it, set it out in your fridge to start to thaw. And then you can cook on the low setting for six to eight hours or until the chicken is tender. And then just take the chicken out and shred it once it's done and then mix it all back up to combine. And then of course you can just serve with cheddar cheese or tortilla chips or potatoes or however you normally like to eat chili. My favorite way was actually with tortilla chips. Uh, chips of pretty much any kind are kind of my weakness, so I really enjoyed this for a lunch. Uh, reheated and then I would just dip my chips in it and I thought it was really yummy that way. As you can see I was having some trouble getting the two bags to stand up because they were really full and really liquidy so they kept trying to fall over me and later I discovered if you just put them in a large like mixing bowl sort of to support the bags that helps a lot and now I'm just adding all the spices again double quantities from what I told you at the beginning of this recipe and then just putting it between the two bags One of the bags tore on the side so I had to transfer. <laughs> Another reason just to have the support of like a mixing bowl so you're not having to yank so much on the bag itself but yeah a little bit of a mess but just a minor error. So in the last recipe when I made the chicken chili, I kind of messed up and I used all my chicken. I was supposed to only use half of it for that recipe. And so because of that, it's only going to make seven meals instead of eight. I was going to be making a chicken teriyaki dish, but I don't really feel like running back to the store today because we've already been like three times. So we're just going to skip that one for now. So it will end up being seven meals. And I'm going to go ahead on to my next dish, which is a pork dish. This next recipe is for crockpot honey Dijon pork and green beans. It takes one pound of pork sirloins, 16 ounce bag of frozen green beans, or you can substitute for fresh, a quarter cup of honey, two tablespoons Dijon mustard, two teaspoons black pepper, half a teaspoon salt, half a teaspoon ground thyme, and half a cup of water. Uh, you don't have to add this until the day of cooking. First thing I'm doing, of course, is removing the fat from the pork loin. And since this is a two pound pork loin, I actually need it for the recipe after this. So I'm gonna cut it in half and split it between the two recipes. So I'll cut it in half and then just set one half aside for the recipe after this. Hey, at least this time I remembered I needed it for two recipes. easier than this. <laughs> Just pour in the green beans and then add the spices and honey and Dijon mustard and this one is good to go. Again take it out the day before or night before let it thaw and then cook it for six to eight hours on the boom or until the pork is tender and this is great served over rice.
The next recipe is for crock pot hot pepper pork and butternut squash. It takes just one pound of pork sirloin, a 16 ounce bag of frozen butternut squash, or you can use fresh like I did here, and then an eight ounce jar of hot pepper jelly. This is probably the simplest recipe and that's what I'm finishing this video on. So I've got a really easy one for last. And here I was struggling getting the jar open, so <laughs> don't mind me while I go get my husband's help. And you just throw everything in the bag, give it a good mix, zip it up, and put it in the freezer. So yes, I did mess up a little bit. We would have had two more meals with a crock pot chicken teriyaki dish if I hadn't used all my chicken in the chili dish, but oh well. So this is what it looks like all bagged up and ready to freeze up. And this was incredible. These, these six meals right here actually lasted Doug and I two weeks. I literally didn't have to go to the grocery store except for like maybe like a side salad for two weeks. It was amazing. I highly recommend it. I've got the recipes linked below. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe for more videos like this. And I'll see you really soon. Bye. Hey, no, the truth.